Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I post every Monday and Thursday. Today is a very, very special video because today we'll be checking out a tool which is not mainstream at all. It's very different from Figma, Adobe XD or Sketch, but at the same time, it claims that it is better than all the other tools in many different ways. Today, I want to present to you a tool named UX Pin, which might or might not blow your minds away. So without further ado, let's just get started with this video. Welcome to my makeshift studio. Uh, pardon me for this, but since I am traveling, this is all that we could do. So to begin with, I have shared my screen here so that you guys can actually see UX Pin uh, in action. The first unique feature begins with the dashboard itself. As you can see, the dashboard is very unique as compared to all the other tools. We have three very useful tabs, projects, design systems, which by the way, there is a design system manager built in into UX Pin. So I think that is very useful. Also manage your team. I've never really seen a platform. Also project groups is a unique thing here. Very similar to Figma where you create a project under that project, you have many different pages. Here also you can have a unique group of projects uh, all inside UX Pin right here. As you guys can notice, I have opened everything on my browser. There is an application for both Windows and Mac OS, but for now we're gonna use the web-based tool so that it goes quickly. A dedicated dark to light mode switcher in this settings panel at the absolute bottom. You have this dedicated light or dark mode switcher which I'm using here and as you can see it works. Also it can detect somehow if your Mac or your Windows is running a dark mode or not. So it fits it automatically. Also, if you are new to UX Pin and do not have a design system or a design library, they have made one already for you. At the bottom left, there is this option which says design system libraries. If I click on this option, as you can see, there are various tabs on the top, textiles, colors, assets, as well as components. At the bottom here, I have this option which says bootstrap. Again, if I click on this, I will get all these various options. If I want the material design system, they have the material design system already built in. As you can see, it's loaded up the material design system library right here. All the colors, all the texts, icons, images, and much more. And the best part is you can always filter from here. So there, as you can see, they have icons included here. If I go to components, I will find all the navigations, buttons, menus, and everything that I needed to get started with my actual design project. I think this saves a lot of time and I think more design tools should have this inbuilt. Also, just like we have in Adobe XD, we have a feature which is called add states right here. I can add two or more states. So this is the base state. All the other states can be named anything. It could be empty, simple as that empty state. And it has a quick tutorial so that you can go over every, all the tutorials, everything will be in the UX Pin library itself. Now adding animations and interactions is where it gets really, really interesting. If I click on any element on my artboard right here, just like this uh, nav bar at the bottom, I click on interactions on the side panel or the properties panel right here. As you can see, we first get a trigger, very similar to the other design tools. I can say click, which is fine. Now we have options which we've never seen before, things like actions. Here, as you can see, we have go to page, hide, show, toggle. Also, we can set a particular variable. Programmers would know. Variables are like superpowers. You can add a value, change a value, whatever you like. We have so many interactions that we see only in prototyping or interaction design tools like Principle or in Framer or in Protopy. API requests, so we can basically fire an API request for example, we want to get weather information from an external application. We can do that. So a real life prototype we'll be able to create with UX Pin. Of course, everything else is similar. Uh, you know, you can change the color, shadows, opacity, size, everything, just like we can do with any other prototyping tool. Also, we have conditions. So if tomorrow you want a button to change only if I filled up a form, then it will change if I fill up a form. These conditions can be played around with and experimented with. So I think the limitations are unlimited in this case, but definitely this will take a lot of practice to get used to. 
It's new, but I think it's very, very valuable at the same time. Another really cool feature that I noticed was adding custom CSS. Yes, if you're a web designer, you should know that CSS is the design language for the web. Everything from designing simple components, giving them color to animating them can be done with CSS. CSS will help you give your designs superpowers. So if I've clicked on this little icon here, and if I go to this little button which says custom CSS, I click on this, I can always add my own code. So I can say background I set as red and I end this line. See how there is a red background behind this icon. Of course, this is just a useless way of using CSS right here, but this is just for example, guys, you can literally have no limits, use it just like you want in your design. Now, one feature which is missing in XD as well as in Sketch and Figma is adding real data without installing any sort of plugins. If you want to add real data, you either have to copy it from an Excel or just install a plugin and then use the data provided by that plugin into your designs. For example, I've created a little rectangle here. I want to add an actual man's image here. If I was in any other design tool, I would have to install a plugin and then add the image into this area. But with UX Paint, it's all built in. So if I click on this right here and on the top, I will, I have these quick actions. So if I click on this little button, which looks like a little newspaper, it says fill with data. If I click on fill with data, so I have these people option. I will click on the avatar or avatar as we call in Hindi. And as you can see, it's added a custom man to my little rectangle here. I can always click on it again so that it changes it once. And you can even link JSON files and Excel sheets and stuff like that so that you can add your custom company or actual data that you are using. Another really, really cool feature is called box. The box feature is like clay. You can mold it to become anything. Uh, I can always drag out to create a little box. So if I click on this gray button here, which looks like a button, we can always change what function this holds. I can always, con as you can see what I'm doing here is I can always convert this into an actual input field from the properties menus itself. 